we have completed the basics of mesh analysis and now we are going to perform the mesh analysis with current sources present in the network and with current sources present in the network there are two cases of mesh analysis in the case number one current source is present in the branch of a mesh which is not shared by other meshes present in the network for example in this network we are having a current source providing two ampere current and this current source is present in this branch and this branch is the branch of this mesh and the other two meshes are not sharing this current source and this is known as the case number one and in case number two the current source present in the network is shared by two meshes for example here this current source is shared by this mesh and this mesh and this particular case is known as super mesh analysis it is known as super mesh analysis and in this particular lecture we are going to discuss only case number one and in the next lecture we will discuss super mesh analysis so let's begin our discussion according to the question we are required to find the value of current i using the mesh analysis current i is the current in this branch we are required to find it and we know in step number one of mesh analysis we first identify the total number of meshes present in the network and in this network we are having one mesh two mesh and three mesh so number of mesh is equal to 3 and in step number 2 we assign the mesh currents let's say i1 is the current in mesh number 1 i2 is the current in mesh number 2 and i3 is the current in mesh number 3 and all the three currents are having the clockwise direction so we are done with step number two and in step number three we develop the mesh equations that is we develop the kvl equations for each and every mesh we are having let's begin with mesh number one i will start from this point we have plus two then we have minus i1 multiplied to 2 so we have 2 times i1 then we have this resistor i1 is flowing in this direction and i3 is flowing in this direction i1 we will take as the larger current therefore we have minus i1 minus i3 multiplied to 1 then we have this resistor i1 is flowing like this i2 is flowing like this we will take i1 as the larger current so we have i1 minus i2 then we move back to the same point now when you simplify this you will have minus 4 times i1 plus current i2 plus current i3 equal to minus 2 let's call this equation number one now we will develop the kvl equation for mesh number two and for mesh number two we will have minus i2 minus i1 i'm starting from this point then we have minus i2 minus i3 and after this we have minus i2 multiplied to 1 that is minus i2 equal to 0 simplify this and you will have i1 minus 3 times i2 plus i3 equal to 0 let's call this equation number 2 now apply kvl in mesh number 3 
and listen very carefully what is happening in the third mesh. When you apply KVL in mesh number 3, let's say from this point you have minus I3 minus I1 multiplied to 1 minus I3 minus I1 multiplied to 1 then you encounter this current source. Now tell me the voltage across this current source. You don't know. You don't know the voltage across this current source so you cannot complete your KVL. Moreover, you are not required to develop the KVL equation for mesh number 3 because you are directly getting the value of current I3. We know current I3 is the mesh current and mesh current flows in the perimeter of the mesh. This means in this branch current will be I3 and this I3 will be equal to 2 ampere. So we will have current I3 equal to 2 amperes. Let's call it third equation. So we have two unknowns I1 and I2 and we have 1, 2 and 3 equations. So it is very easy to find I1 and I2 but we will focus on calculating I2 only because I is equal to I2 and if question requires the calculation of I1 then you can calculate I1 very easily. Now we will focus on calculating current I2 and to calculate current I2 we will first put the value of I3 in equation number 1 that means in this equation this will give us minus 4 I1 plus I2 plus 2 equal to minus 2 when you simplify this you will get minus 4 times I1 plus I2 equal to minus 4 let's call this equation number 4 now we will put value of I3 in equation number 2 and doing so we will have I1 minus 3 times I2 plus 2 equal to 0 or we can write equal to minus 2 and let's call this equation number 5. Now you can see that in equation number 4 and equation number 5 I1 and I2 are the unknowns therefore when you solve 4 and 5 you will get I2 equal to 12 over 11 and I2 is equal to current I the current which we were supposed to calculate so I is equal to 12 over 11 and don't forget to write the unit that is amperes so this is our answer so you can see that when current source is present in the network then mesh analysis becomes very easy to perform the complexity of the mesh analysis reduces with the presence of current source. More current source will reduce the complexity more. Why? Because we get the value of current directly. And in the very first lecture I told you we perform the mesh analysis to get the unknown currents. And here we are getting current directly when current source is present. So I hope this lecture is clear to you. If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section. Now I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.